This is what we start with then. We buy our Dynamis and it comes in this attractive packaging. Exactly, yes, yeah. Um, or like we did earlier, you can buy the Dynamis train set. But it's ex what you get in Dynamis, as it is there, is exactly the same as we saw earlier in the train set. Right. So you get the base station, a handset, the lanyard, the batteries, and the transformer, two and a half hours okay. of supply. Now that's fine, but I'm ambitious. Right, so yeah. I want to expand. And over here, we have something that sounds very, very technical, the Pro Box. The Pro Box, what this does, actually, it expands Dynamis because Dynamis is a modular system, Tony. So mm -hmm. uh, we designed it in a way that customers can actually buy it in stages as their budget uh, allows them to. Yeah. Um, and because it's a stackable system, it all mounts on top so, of it. So you're going to show me how this stacks? I'll show you how that all does, yeah, after we've covered the other two parts right. of the Dynamis okay. system as well. So that's the next thing yeah. you need. And yeah. then. We've got wireless handset and wireless receiver. Exactly. Uh, well, the receivers basically you can add up to uh, four additional receivers to the Dynamis system. So if you've got a very large layout or a continental layout or an American layout where sometimes layouts go through several rooms, you have a receiver in each room. And so you can link those up in each room. And the wireless handset, Tony, uh, in a few minutes' time, you will be able to run this layout with me at the same time. So the range then is pretty good of the standard Dynamics, yes. but obviously if you go in another room, you need further receivers. Exactly, yes, yeah. yes, yes, exactly. OK, Tony, as I said a moment ago, uh, we're going to show you how to put the Dynamics modular system together. Um, what we first have is the command station, and that's got a receiver attached. To do this, very simply, you remove the receiver from the top. Okay, put that there a moment. And if we take the Pro Box, mm -hmm. you'll notice on the bottoms of the Pro Box, on the command station, sorry, there's a load of terminals, and then you've also got the plug-in terminals there. That literally... And they can't be fitted the wrong way round? No, no, it's impossible because okay. the terminals only go one way. Yes. So that plugs in like so. So that's like a piggyback, really. A piggyback, yeah. yeah. So there's the dynamic system, the complete system now with the Pro Box underneath. Mm -hmm. You then take the, the next terminal, which is, again, all comes with it. That plugs in. And what's that? This is the receiver expansion unit. So you've got four points to plug in the receivers there. And then the, the, the original receiver plugs in the front, which is one of those which you've got in your hand. So we just plug that together like and so. And all of that, I stress again, is carefully explained in... Very carefully explained, yes. yes, yeah, exactly, yes. And then we take the original receiver, that plugs in the top like so, or it should do. And I can find, there we go, like so. And then once you've got that, you've got the terminals at the back, and with the cable provided for the receiver, that plugs in the output like that, and then plugs in the underside of the receiver. So this goes in the other room then? In the other room, or on different points of the layout, yes. if you wish. Uh, and even in, uh, applied to that is two little uh, slots at the back, so if you want to put two screws in the wall, you can left So it needs to be sort of in, in a prominent place, you prominent would say, place, not, yes, not yeah. hidden. No, but uh, obviously with the receivers, you could have one underneath the layout, if you wish. And it'll still work? Yeah. Exactly. If you want to sit down and operate your layout with a glass of wine uh, at the same time, you've got a receiver which is going to pick up the signal quite happily right. at low level. Right then, Tony. Theory, now the practice. We've got here the Backman demonstration layout, the classic 6x4, and very beautifully done with the Scenecraft buildings. And straight from the box, one yes. of your Class 24s. Yes. So, as supplied, its factory default number is three. It is, yes, yes. So, let's say how to make it work, please. Well, how we do, uh, using the menu buttons along the bottom, if we select the loco select button there, and now we see select loco address flashing, we press number three, and then referring again to page seven of the manual where it tells you to press the tick, which is the accept button, select that, it's ready to drive. Okay. We can switch our lights on, because the class 24 has lights, uh, tail lights this end, driving lights that end, and off we go. And we'll drive that loco straight round to the station. So that's 
nothing altered on the parameters. That's just as no. it comes. You've, you've not modified its performance whatsoever. Not at all, no. So that's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah. So really, Tony, the next part is really to change the address of the locomotive we've got there. There's two ways of doing that. You can do it, change the address on the main track, which is what we call programming on the main, uh, or we can use a service track or a programming track. Um, the advantage of using the service track over programming on the main is that if you don't know what manufacturers of decoder you've got in your locomotive, and you do programming on the main, all your locomotives could reprogram to the same address. Right. Um, if there was more than one locomotive on the track, of course. So f what we'll do is we'll drive the locomotive into the siding where the coal mine is, and what I've done is I've created that to be a service track. Uh, and by using the Dynamis Pro Box, we run a service track lead from there to the siding, and then basically we have a simple isolated break in the rail. Mm. No isolated section, just a break in the rail. Mm. Uh, so if we now drive that into the side, and you'll see that the locomotive just drives as normal. Mm -hmm. It won't do any different. I'll stop around just on the corner, because I know that's past the isolated brake. So you now isolate that from the rest of the layout? Automatically because Dynamis does it automatically. Right. You don't uh, well, need a switch. You don't need a switch. It's all actually digitally done by the box. And when we go into the service track mode program, I'll show you how to do that. OK. So let's, let's reconfigure that, Donald. Yeah. Give it a different number. OK, Tony. So let's change the address of that class 24, shall we, from address 003. If we press the menu button, now what we need to do is scroll across five positions. So it actually says, Program 0003. Mm. We use the accept button. And what we're going to do now is scroll across one to the right. And we're going to write address 0003 on service track. And we press a little tick to say accept. So this time we're backspace, so three is flashing. Let's use number 24 because it's the class 24. Class 24. And what we do now is press program. If you listen closely, you'll hear the little click as the isolated section cuts over automatically on the Dynamis. So that's pro programming. So no separate switch? No separate switch. You'll now notice that it says LOC, which is the address, LOCO 0024. Now then, Tony, the magic of digital. We've got our one locomotive on the track, and you've told me that you can control two independently. So prove it, please. Okay. Here we go. Now okay. have a, a class 25 on the road. Fine, okay. Well, let's, uh, what we need to do now is let's select address number three. Because that's well, the same address as that was. Was, yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. And now uh, all we need to do is select the lights on the locomotive so we know which way it's going to go. Yes. yes. We can change that, obviously. Nice thing with this locomotive, Tony, we've got sound. So if we press function one, the sound will start. So that's a start-up. This is the start-up of the Class 25, yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Let's have a guard whistle, shall we? A bit of air. And let's uh, drive that loco off. Air brakes off. Air brakes off. This is, I have to say, where digital really scores, because you've got all that happening with analog, it would just be impossible. And remember, all those functions are just being controlled by pressing the buttons yes. underneath my phone. Mm -hmm. And that's an actual 25 recording that's been digitised, isn't it? Yes, it is, yes, yes, it is. Now, as I said, I said to you earlier about two locos on the same piece of track. Yeah. So let's change the direction of that locomotive there, and let's go to our other locomotive, which is our Class 24 on address number 24. Mm -hmm. So as we do there, select that, accept it. Let's change the direction. Now, if we get the 24 going nice and slowly, 
And now we go back to address number three. 